Wii U and 3DS? Rest in peace. It's the LP Podcast. Hello and happy Tuesday. It's the day of the week where I do more talking than playing of Nintendo games, but Nintendo's the topic all the same. Specifically, the news of yesterday's shutdown of the online servers and support for the 3DS and the Wii U. It was announced a while ago. It was a long time coming. It's not something that necessarily caught anyone on by surprise, I'd have to imagine, unless, of course, they were living on a rock or not living at all. But it's still a sad thing all together. Yesterday was the final day to play online on either console. And for a lot of people, it's pretty sad. No more Splatoon 1. No more Mario Kart 7. I personally, I owned neither of these consoles. Be completely transparent with you. This was the console generation, as it were, that I effectively skipped. I was in college at the time. I was joining the army. I didn't have time in my life at the time to play it to play either of these and i I am not alone at least in regards to the wii u considering it didn't sell particularly well but the 3ds was an amazing seller and did very well and i'd be curious to hear number one from any of you what your best memories are from the wii u and 3ds either or that era and number two what this shutdown means to you because undoubtedly there was a non-zero amount of people who were still playing games relying on these services right people who grew up with the games or people that just developed a certain affinity for the titles that were housed on them people that by and large are screwed mcdoodled now they don't have the opportunity to play any of those games in their online format uh, we'll read the article here and see kind of what the uh, the author thinks of it. The Wii U was far from Nintendo's most powerful console, but I still have a lot of great memories with the machine. It was the first console I used to play competitively. As someone who never really liked the pressure of playing with complete strangers in games like Halo or Call of Duty, the Wii U allowed me to break through that. It let me jump right into Mario Kart 8 with players from all over the world while raging behind my TV screen as the blue shell ruined my first place finish. Thankfully... You know, Mario Kart 8 still prevalent on the Nintendo Switch, but it did release first and foremost on the Wii U, so that makes sense. And then, of course, Splatoon and Super Smash Bros. What? Not Ultimate, obviously, because that's on the Switch, but the one, was it Brawl, I think? The same goes for the Nintendo 3DS, which I used to visit other towns in Animal Crossing New Leaf, compete against other players in Kid Icarus Uprising, and have battles in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. It's sad that after more than a decade, online services for both the Wii U and 3DS are going away for good. Nintendo first announced the shutdown last year and also closed the online stores for both consoles in March of 2023, 13 months ago to this date. Despite the shutdown, Nintendo says features like Street Pass, Pokemon Bank, and Poke Transfer will remain online. It is doing away with the Nintendo Badge Arcade and Spot Pass services, though. I'm sure the one person who purchased a brand new Wii U last year must be disappointed. Apparently, people are still buying brand new Wii U's. That's crazy. I have actually been looking at purchasing a Wii U. Uh, Definitely not brand new, probably a used version. Uh, And I mentioned I didn't have a Wii U or a 3DS at the time. I do have a 3DS now, so I I definitely need a Wii U just to to not use it online, apparently. Ah, still, the Wii U and 3DS games gave me a taste of online play as I went on to play League of Legends, Team Fortress 2, Overwatch, and Halo Infinite. But none of them quite gave me the same rush as scoring a last-minute win in Splatoon or ramming someone out of my way in Mario Kart 8. At least both of these games, along with other popular titles, live on through the Switch. Is Splatoon 1 on the Switch? I I know that 2 and 3 are. Apparently 1 must be as well. Clearly Mario Kart 8 is because we play it on this very channel with the viewers uh, relatively frequently. If you want to go online on the Wii U or 3DS one last time, uh, the article says you have until uh, 7 p.m. today. Uh, No, you do not. As of yesterday when this article was written, you did. But as of now, services are terminated. So again, I ask you, what were your favorite moments from either of those consoles? What particularly will be missed for you in your experience on these servers? Anything at all? Or are you ready to just move on to the next thing? Either which way. I unfortunately don't have any good anecdotes, so I'm ready to move on to the next thing here on our headlines. The next one, the best action games on the Nintendo Switch, as detailed by The Gamer. 
The Nintendo Switch offers a wide variety of action games, from top-down indies to big-budget shooters satisfying every daredevil gamer. It's true, the Nintendo Switch does have a diverse slate in its catalog, and I'm very curious to see here how they rank the action games, number one, and how they define action games, too, because it can be relatively subjective. We'll see here, good action games are usually one memorable and two electrifying blasts from start to finish. They come in all shapes and sizes, the one thing they all have in common is their penchant for huge thrills and bombastic set pieces. Despite Nintendo's child-friendly leanings, it doesn't shy from including a bit of edge-of-your-seat action on its platform. I can mostly agree with that. Um, it, it it seems to me that it, it, it's emphasizing like the game mechanics here, because, but I don't think that's necessarily the end-all be-all of a good action game. I think that there's a certain level of importance placed on narrative, maybe? Story, character development, and stuff like that that help fully flesh out an action-adventure game into what it is, because if it's just... You know, if it's just how you play it, then by golly, it could be a platformer or anything else, so... I don't know. I, I We're splitting hairs here. Let's move on and see how they, how they rank things here. Pepper Grinder is the first one listed. Uh, released... 2024 zero <laughs> in the 0th day of the 0th month in 2024 something tells me that that is a uh, a, a mistake I would, I would imagine but I've never played Pepper Grinder it's a pixel style action platformer where you control the titular Pepper a pirate with an oversized drill goodness gracious I got an oversized burp bubbling up in my stomach uh, after that The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening it is a remake. Is that fair? I guess it is fair. It's an entirely new game in its own right, released in 2019. Uh, and I'm not I'm not certain if they're ranking these or if they are just listing good ones because there are no numbers associated thus far with the first two. But I can agree with uh, Link's Awakening being on this list as long, of course, as long, of course, as this list continues on for a few. If it's only like a three-part list, then ah, there's maybe some other games I would have put first, but we'll see. Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. Okay, so this is what I was talking about when, when we talk about, like, what defines an action game. Because, yeah, there is action in Hyrule Warriors, uh, but I feel like it's its own genre in and of itself, right? Because when you compare Hyrule Warriors to the prior Zelda, Link's Awakening, markedly different. Markedly different gameplays, so it's uh, interesting to see. Uh, I did play Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, and it is a fine game, but I'm not certain that it would fall in my top tier list of best action games on the Switch. Moving on, Hollow Knight, again. Uh, I, this game continues to pop up in my own life uh, all the time. People keep telling me I need to play it. You gotta play it, LP, please play Hollow Knight. And I will, I will. And this is just serving as another uh, <laughs> reminder, shall we say, that this game deserves my attention. Uh, released in 2017, it's a brilliant side-scrolling action platform that merges some of the most popular genres. Those familiar with Souls likes will feel right at home with the game's brilliant skills-based hack and slash combat, as well as its eerie atmosphere and intriguingly vague lore. Sounds good. I'm in. Moving down, Astral Chain from 2019. As an action game for the Switch, frantic combat set against a futuristic cyberpunk-esque backdrop with all the grandiose set pieces and delightfully unique mechanics you would expect from the prolific developer. Platinum Games. Cool. Well, never heard of it. Never played it. It's uh, it's four years old now at this point. Almost five. Goodness gracious. Time. How does it work? Moving on. Hades. Yes, I've heard a lot of good things about Hades. Never played it myself. I've watched a little bit of a Let's Play of it. Uh, and it does look like it would be right up my alley as well. Hard to believe it's already come out that long ago. I feel like it was a recent release. Beautiful. The ever-pervasive indie mega-hit merges the best elements from top-down isometric dungeon crawlers and the thrill of satisfyingly difficult action rogue lights. Puts them all under the same mythological umbrella and includes a captivating story that features an exciting assortment of gods from the Greek pantheon. Onward, we have Ori and the Will of the Wisps, Bayonetta 3, Doom Eternal, classic franchise, Pikmin 4, hey there! That's not one I would have expected to see on the action list. More or less a, like a real-time strategy sort of game. Uh, fascinating. Uh, great game. Great game. One of my favorite games uh, of this past year. Honestly, probably in all of all time. Really, I haven't I haven't put any huge amount of thought into my all-time game rating list, but it's definitely a top-tier game on the Switch. That's for certain. Top-tier action game, too, apparently, according to this list. It may not seem like an action game at first glance, says the writer, but that level of deception is what makes the Pikmin game so in intriguing 
I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not an editor here. I'm not here to, <laughs> not here to, to typo check you. But I don't know that that's how it's spelled. Anyways, in Pikmin 4, you play as a rescue team recruit who has to fly to the dangerous PNF 404 to save your coworkers along with the pilot Olimar. Yes, indeed. Uh, I, I played it on this channel. Serena, my wife, and I, we essentially 100 presented it, doing everything except for the final Louis thing, uh, which is. Not necessarily important. Anyways, great game. Great game. Uh, any chance you can rank Pikmin 4 highly, I'm supportive of it, even though I don't necessarily uh, consider it quintessential action game, shall we say. Moving on, Metroid Dread. I consider that an action game. Uh, Metroid has almost defined its own genre, specifically this style of Metroid, right? You've heard the term Metroidvania, bringing in the, you know, the conglomeration of Metroid and Castlevania games. Uh, definite action. And also very good. I've played a small amount of Metroid Dread. I definitely do need to invest more time into it. But I'll let you in on a little known fact. I've never seen a Metroid game all the way to completion. <laughs> I have played a lot of Metroid games, never beat a single one. Released October 2021. Wow. Serving as a sequel to the classic 2D Metroid games of old, Metroid Dread harkens back to the series' glory days. You'll use Samus's trusty arm cannon as she blasts and charge beams her way through a variety of formidable foes. It's the absolute truth. Monster Hunter Rise. Again, another franchise I haven't spent enough time on. Uh, glad to see it here because I do know that the fan base is quite rabid. <laughs> uh, Dead Cells from 2017. Kirby and the Forgotten Land from 2022. Again, another game that uh, Serena and I co opt on the channel. Great game. Uh, this is probably the first one of all of these that I would be like, yep, this is an action game. It's an action adventure because what else would you call it, right? And it is a great game. Uh, arguably my favorite game from 2022. It, it's, it, it was a long time coming as well. I think the gap in 3D Kirby Adventure games had to have been like 20 plus years, right? It was the one prior to Kirby and the Forgotten Land, Kirby and the Crystal Shards. I don't... I think it might... I mean, there was, there's plenty of Kirby representation in the years between, but as far as... I mean, I guess... Kirby and the Crystal Shards wasn't like a true 3D adventure. It was still very much a side-scroller. But you know what I'm saying, right? <laughs> it was the first 3D mainline Kirby in a long time. And it did so very well. It was uh, cute, as you might imagine, with a Kirby game. But also extraordinarily, extraordinarily deep in the way of lore and all sorts of different combat activities and game mechanics that you could take advantage of in order to progress deeper through it. And a really, really, really solid post-game, too. Great game. Glad to see it get recognized here. The author says, while at first glance you may associate this more with a platformer title, well, see, I wouldn't. It's funny they say that. Uh, when, when you play Kirby in the Forgotten Land, it doesn't really. I mean, there are some platforming in, elements involved in it, but, you know, there's platforming elements in Skyrim, for goodness sakes, and that is not a platformer. Uh, Kirby games are action-packed adventures at heart. The Forgotten Land is Kirby's first foray into the world of 3D motion, having always been a 2D action platformer before. In it, you are tasked with adventuring through a foreign universe to save all your friendly Waddle Dees from an array of animals. Unlike Dreamland, however, the landscape seems to have once been an urban paradise that was long since abandoned. Hence, the Forgotten Land. And I, I, it, I think that's an erroneous S. Look at this. Am, am I podcasting, reading this article, or am I fact-checking and, and typo-checking them? <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, we can do multiple things at multiple times. Moving on, another Metroid, Metroid Prime Remastered for the Nintendo Switch. Of course, as we know, it's uh, the first Metroid Prime game remastered. Makes sense. And that wraps up the list. Fascinating. So do they not consider Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom to be action games? What do they consider those? I mean, if they put Link to the Past and freaking Age of Calamity on here, are obviously incorporating Zelda games of multiple different styles. Let's let me, let me skew or skim through the top here. Do they say anything about anything about Zelda? Anything about Zelda up top here? Um, I mean, it references Link's Awakening. Fascinating. What do you think? Are there are there any other erroneous omissions that you think should be in here? Uh, obviously, Super Mario Odyssey. Is an action and game in its own right too, but I, I do consider that one more of a platformer just because it's Mario. Mario himself like is the definition of a platformer. He almost kind of co-opted the entirety of the genre from a very early age. Uh, but really, Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom should be mentioned here, right? Maybe, maybe you know, everyone's got different opinions. It's fine if he doesn't think that these those games are 
of the best action games on the Switch, but they should at least deserve a mention given how well they sold and frankly how good of games they are. They're fantastic. So I don't know about that. I don't know about that. <laughs> Well, it would seem that they have been forgotten, much like the games on our next list to wrap out the episode. Forgotten N64 games published by Nintendo. Now, if you're like me, you grew up in the 90s. The N64 was was your childhood console, right? I mean, you, there, there's probably some, some SNES, maybe some Sega, and then, of course, we're moving to GameCube, PlayStation, Xbox, stuff like that as well. But... I, myself specifically, have a huge wave of nostalgia for the N64. Uh, it, it was my first significant gaming experience, and I'm curious to see here what are some of the quote-unquote forgotten titles. Obviously not going to be anything along the lines of Ocarina of Time or Mario 64, not even Super Smash Bros., certainly not. So let's see if there's anything that may be uh, new to me. First one off the list, Excite Bike 64. No, that's a great game. I never owned it, but I did rent it a number of times at Blockbuster, and I particularly liked how you could create your own courses. Great time. Uh, doing all the things that I would never do in actuality. Riding a mechanical bike, jumping off of dirt piles. Yeah, right. <laughs> you kidding me? Yeah, I'd die. But... Excite Bike is one of the most iconic video games on the Nintendo Entertainment System, but it never received a sequel until the N64 in 2000. And it was fantastic. Moving on, Dr. Mario 64. Yeah, uh, I, I, I agree with this one for sure. Um, I, maybe not forgotten, but I definitely don't think of it very much. I do think of Excitebike from time to time, so maybe that's not as forgotten as Mario 64. Excuse me, Dr. Mario 64. Bill Dispensing. Don't you love to see it? Moving on, the Pokemon Puzzle Leave. Uh, that one... I think I watched a, uh, a TRG Coliseum a couple years ago that they, they played that one. Otherwise, yes, that one's definitely forgotten by me. <laughs> but it's also, I believe, on NSO. And I played it, and it's pretty fun. I, I never played it on the N64 itself. And look at this, yeah, platforms, Nintendo Switch. So they're, in fact, confirming that it is on NSO. So it's not bad. It, you know, in, this, in the same vein sort of as Dr. Mario... Uh, very much a, uh, how, how do we put it, like a, like a Tetris-esque sort of, you know, things fall down from the ceiling, things are on this array, you gotta move the things and get the things in a way that they go away. Moving on, Ridge Racer 64, never heard of it, what is this? In 64 and on the DS, the very first Ridge Racers game didn't originate on a Nintendo console, originally released in arcades in 1993, seeing a console port in the PlayStation the following year. Its first installment on a Nintendo console was Ridge Racer 64, debuting in North America in the year 2000. Sadly, this high-octane car racing game didn't catch on with audiences. Yeah, I'd never heard of it. Never heard of it, so it never even saw a release in Japan. Crazy. Okay, so that, I mean, if you're segmenting the market in such a way that it doesn't even have a release in the console's home country, probably not going to do super hot. Even saying here at the end of this, a vital market for the gaming industry, referencing Japan. Uh, next, again, in the vein of the uh, the Tetris-esque, I don't think it gets any more Tetris-esque than Tetris itself, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the year 1999, and it's exactly what you like. Tetris. Beyond that, we have Mischief Makers, a 2D side-scroller that I'm not familiar of. It was a rare video game for the N64, a 2D side-scroller that would more commonly be found on the SNES or Sega Genesis. Released in 97, it was the first standard 2D side-scroller to find a home on the console centered on a robotic maid attempting to rescue her creator from grave danger. How sweet. Moving down, we have a Japanese exclusive called Sin and Punishment. How heinous. It doesn't sound great. <laughs> Often the same developers as Mischief Makers up ahead was a rail shooter designed for the N64 which never saw a release outside of Japan. So look at this, we're, we're talking about market segmentation. I think that in order for a video game to do, you know, I don't know about well, but to really like live up to its full potential, it needs both an Eastern and Western release, right? If it doesn't have that, then it's just probably destined to fail. Because if it succeeds, if, if you get one of those, right? If you get just the Western release or just the Japanese release or something, it does really well. There's no reason that it wouldn't then be spread out to the rest of the global market. And if that's not the case, then obviously it's forgotten. Hence the list. Moving on, Blast Corpse, uh, developed by Rare. All right, Banjo-Kazooie, Banjo-Tooie, Diddy Kong Racing, a number of others. Very few video game fans remember this. It was an important moment in the history of the N64. Particularly, Blast Corps was one of the first games developed to the console by Rare. Ah! They also, I mean, previously they, they developed Donkey Kong Country for the Super Nintendo, but for the N64. 
It was one of their first. And then obviously they moved into the Banjo Kazooie and everything else. Very cool. Very cool. That's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Bomberman Hero. Okay, Bomberman was a game that I played and enjoyed a lot. Actually, uh, again, it was it was a blockbuster game, <laughs> a game I didn't own, but a game I rented. Uh, and it is one of the most iconic uh, video game franchises, at least retro video game franchises of all time. Notable for its top-down perspective, competitive gameplay. It's been a while since Bomberman had a uh, had an installation, hasn't it been? Huh. When was the last Barman game? I don't I don't actually remember. That's something that I haven't thought of in a long time. Fascinating. Hence forgotten, right? You don't think of it for a while, it's been forgotten. And that wraps up the list. So so what do you think? I don't necessarily know what your expertise is, your experience is with the N64, but there are any games that you feel are perhaps forgotten or maybe underrepresentative. One that comes to mind for me is Rocket Robot on Wheels. And let me see if I can pull that up again. It was a, it was a blockbuster game, so <laughs> not a game that I that I ever owned, but it was a lot of fun. It was a very unique sort of action adventure, some platforming, and it's not something that ever saw a sequel, I don't think. And I remember the the cartridge being red. I remember the red the red cartridge, red cartridge, red cartridge. Is that is that no? Mm, see that looks familiar right here, but. But it stopped pulling that up for a lot of these other ones. Either which way, it was a good time. And I think that is one that has been forgotten. I mean, maybe it's just been so forgotten that it's not even on this list at all. Or maybe they don't think it's been forgotten. I don't know. Either which way, curious to hear your thoughts on that. What you think of the Wii U and 3DS shutdown and what your favorite memories are from that. And I'm also curious, well, I guess not curious, but keen on saying thank you for watching. My name is LP. I do this every Tuesday and I hope I see you again next time.